This is the solution to quiz 12. The first question is an initial value problem. A quick glance uh, tells me that it's separable. So we'll solve this by separation. So that is 2y minus 1 dy is uh, x squared plus 5 dx. Okay, so we can anti-differentiate uh, both sides. <coughs> so then that is y squared minus y is equal to x cubed over 3 plus 5x and then plus C. So to determine this C, we'll use the initial data to figure that out. When we plug in xy is 0, 11, that should be a solution. So 11 squared uh, minus 11. So this would be 11 11s minus 1 11, so that's 10 11s, so that's 110 is uh, 0 plus 0 plus C. So then that tells us that C is 110. And therefore, y squared uh, minus y is x cubed over 3 plus 5x uh, plus 110. But because it doesn't say uh, solve for y, this is the solution. <coughs> so for exercise 2, this is also an initial value problem that's separable. So we'll separate it. So 1 over y squared dy is 1 over x dx. If we anti-differentiate both sides, so for the left-hand side we'll use the power rule, for the right-hand side the log rule. So this would be uh, y to negative 1 divided by negative 1 is equal to log absolute x plus a constant. Uh, simplify a little bit to get negative 1 over y <coughs> is log absolute x plus a constant. So we'll use the initial data to solve for c. So this tells us that if we plug in xy is e3, that should be a solution. So negative 1 over 3 is log of e plus a constant. The log of e is 1, so negative 1 third is 1 plus c. Uh, moving that to the other side, so negative 1 third minus 3 thirds is negative 4 thirds is c. <coughs> uh, therefore, we have negative 1 over y is uh, what? This one. Log of absolute value of x minus 4 thirds. And then this is fine for the answer, but if you just really wanted to solve for y, it's easy to do, to do so. So you could get negative 1, and then I'll divide by this log absolute x minus 4 thirds and then I'll multiply y to the other side and get y. So that's the answer to question 2. Question 3. <coughs> T is the temperature of an object in a room with temperature R. Room temperature is constant. Okay, Newton's law of cooling. Okay, so for part A, suppose that we have uh, these values. So then the differential equation is 
d big T, d little t is um, 25 minus t, like so. So then it says solve for the temperature big T at any time. Okay, so this is, <coughs> oh, and we have this, the initial temperature. So and little t big T equal to 0, 100 is a solution. So this is separable. So 1 over 25 minus big T is dt. Uh, so 1 over 25 minus t d big T is d little t. So if we anti-differentiate both sides, that's negative log absolute value 25 minus t is uh, little t plus a constant. So now we can use the initial data to determine c. So that's negative log of absolute value of 25 uh, minus 100 is 0 plus c. So that would be negative log of 25 minus 100 is negative 75, but then absolute value is 75. <coughs> OK. So then that tells us that negative log absolute value of 25 minus big T is little t minus log of 75. OK. <coughs> so now I'll solve for big T. If I negate everything, then this is log 25 minus t is um, negative t plus the log of 75. If you exponentiate both sides, 25 minus t in absolute value is exponential negative t, exponential log of 75. <coughs> exponential of log of 75 is just 75. So 25 minus t is 75 exponential negative t. So that means that there are two um, solutions. There is, <coughs> there is 25 minus big T is negative 75 exponential negative T. Or 25 minus big T is positive 75 exponential negative little t. However, <coughs> only one of these can be a solution because uh, the initial data, if we check both of these, So for this one, if we plug in the initial data, we get 25 minus 100 is negative 75, uh, and then exponential of 0. So exponential of 0 is 1. 25 minus 100 is negative 75 equal to negative 75. That looks good. So similarly here, we would get 25 minus 100 is 75 exponential of 0. And these don't match. So this one is not a solution. So this one is the only solution. <coughs> so 25 minus big T is negative 75 exponential negative T. So I could move the T to the other side and the 75 to this side. So that would be 25 uh, plus 
75 exponential negative t is big T. So that's the answer to part A. Let's see if that uh, makes sense. So what this is saying is that if we plug in little at time is zero, little t is zero, then the temperature, uh, the temperature should be 100. So that it's exponential of zero is one, so that'd be 75 plus 25, that's 100. And thinking about this situation physically, if you have a 100 degree object inside of a 25 degree room, and the room is being kept at 25 degrees, then the object will cool to 25. So does, is that what, uh, does, does that agree with the story? Well, that's the subject of part B. Part B is asking for you to compute the limit as little t goes to infinity of big T. Well, that is the limit as t goes to infinity of, I'll write it in this way, 25 plus 75 over exponential of little t. So 25, that's just a constant. 75 is a constant, and exponential of t as t goes to infinity is going to get arbitrarily big. So 75 over arbitrarily big is 0, so the answer is 25. The interpretation of this number is saying that because the room temperature is 25 degrees, R is 25 degrees. The temperature big T of the object will eventually, as time goes to infinity, approach 25 degrees.